Let's add a custom block model to Minecraft. Forging fabric courses with advanced topics such as entities, custom structures, and 3D armor models linked in the description below. All right, we find ourselves back in Intelligy once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom block model to Minecraft. And for this, of course, similar to the item model, we're going to use a block bench. Now, I have already prepared the block model right here. It was done by Nano Attack, and once again, this looks freaking amazing, and I, I really love it. It's it's just a really nice, you know, block model in this case. And once again, of course, this is available to you in the description below for download, and we're going to export this. So the way that to export this is actually you know, fairly straightforward. Same with the item model. We're just going to go to file, export, and then export block and item model once you have it. And then we can basically export it. Let's just do that. There you go. And then we have a JSON file. Now that JSON file, we can once again, literally just use as a block model file. So that JSON file is going to be added in our assets folder in just a moment. But for the time being, we actually need to make the block itself. And then we can proceed. So to make the block we need a custom block class in this case. Now, the reason for this is not actually the because we have a different model. It's actually because we want to rotate the model as well. So this is going to be the gem cutting station block. There you go. And this will just extend the block class. And there you go. We'll hover over this. Read constructor matching super. If the parameter here annoys you, just shift F6 to rename it, and then it should suggest the property's name there as well. And what do we want? Well, we want a direction property. So the idea here is that direction property called facing, and this is going to be equal to block state properties dot horizontal facing. Why do we want a facing property here? Well, if we go back right here, you can see this now, you know, is basically facing to the north. And every time we set it down, we would want it so that, you know, this is actually facing us instead of, you know, it basically rotating around. So right now, if I was looking to the south direction and placing it down, then it would sit it down like this. However, if I was, you know, looking into the west direction, then all of a sudden it would place it down like this. And that's not, you know, the nicest thing. This is why we basically want the facing property to rotate it around. You've seen this with the normal furnace as well, right? The furnace front is always facing the player when you set it down. And that is also where the next few methods come from. I'm going to copy this over. All of this is, of course, available to you in the description below. GitHub repository and individual gist as well. So those are methods. Basically, you know, they are responsible for the facing. And this pretty much just is the same thing as in the abstract furnace block, for example. That's where you could look this up as well. The state for placement here is just that when you place this block down, what is the state for placing it down? And you basically get the opposite direction of where the player is facing so that the front always faces us. That's the general idea. And then, of course, very important that the block state definition here is added to the builder. That is very important. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And we'll need another thing, and that is the voxel shape. I will also actually be copying this over and I will explain. So the voxel shape in this case is actually the outline of the block when you hover over it. Usually, obviously, this is should be, you know, 0, 0, 0, 16, 16, 16. In this case, it's 0, 0, 0. Actually, we can even make this a little bit easier. Like this. There you go. So this is 0, 0, 0, 16, 8, 16. So the height of the voxel shape is only going to be 8, because if we actually look at this, the height of this is actually also 8 blocks. We can take a look at this by doing it like this, and then, you know, count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you can see that there's only, you know, eight blocks. It's basically like a like a slab. So it has about the size of a slab. And why is this, you know, interesting? Why is, you know, why are we doing it like this? Well, you can also export the voxel shapes from Blockbench. However, the reason we're not doing this is because this is a very, very complicated model, right? Like, look at this. It, it has, you know, different uh, rotations in here and has crazy pivot points. And that is something that the voxel shapes should not be perfect. So you know, I don't want this to be a perfect outline for everything because that would be a way too complex voxel shape. So just for the sake of argument, I'm actually going to show this, uh, but this is not a good idea. Like, this is not a good idea. So this should be voxel shapes, I believe. And then let's uh, add everything below here. So this is the first issue that you're going to run into. And that is that when you have the, when you have everything grouped nicely together and then under the voxel shapes one, uh, you can export it with a particular plugin. That is the mod utils plugin right here. Able to uh, export voxel shapes, as you can see. But the issue is that if we then were to export this, right, as a voxel shape, this would be under the Mojang mappings, yes. And let's just do this as a voxel shape. 
I can show you what this turns into. And this is a real issue because, um, you know, first of all, it it's fine, right? But then, um, actually, let's zoom out a little bit so you can see, mm, that's that's quite a bit. That's a lot of stuff. That's even more stuff. And yeah, it doesn't stop. It, it, it pretty much is just, as you can see, it gets so freaking complicated. And then the worst thing is that the way that the voxel shapes stuff here from the mod utils works is that it takes the group names and assumes that they are, um, as you can see here, Boolean functions, which of course, there's no Boolean function that's called water bottle. That's just the name of this particular grouping right here, right? So this is why it's not always desirable to actually export the voxel shapes from the actual block bench model. Sometimes you just want an approximation of the voxel shape that is usually fine and usually actually more desirable. And because because if you have like crazy complicated voxel shapes that can actually slow down the game quite significantly. So I usually highly suggest not going in and making it exactly the voxel shape that you have, but trying to approximate it. Right, but those are all of the things that we need to add here in the class. So let's go to the mod blocks class and let's actually get the gem cutter registered. So gem underscore cunning underscore station. And then of course the same for the name gem underscore cunning underscore station. And then this is going to be the gem cunning station block. There you go. And this is going to copy from actually, yeah, sure. It's going to copy from the iron block. Why not? And that should be it. No, we actually also need to call the no occlusion here. And that should then be it. Yes. And this is almost all that we need to do. We also still need to go into our tutorial mod class and actually add a particular render layer here. So this is going to be the gem cutting station. And this is actually going to be translucent. So why is it translucent? Well, once again, switch to block bench, we can see that the actual tank here, this water bottle, water, you know, tank is actually transparent. And to make this transparent, we want to select the translucent render layer in this case, and then it should also work totally fine. So that is pretty cool, all things considered. And next, we are just, we just need to add the JSON files. So once again, I will copy those over, but those are all available to you in the description below, get our repository and individual gist as well. So the block states JSON, you can see is just you know, has the facing north, east, south, and west, and then just points to the same model. However, just rotated around. So we just rotate around the model, and that is pretty much all that we're doing here. Of course, for the translation, this should be, I mean, fairly self-explanatory, all things considered. It shouldn't be that crazy at this point. Let's just copy this over as well, right? Gem cutting station, the gem cutting station. And then the block model, of course, is the thing that we've actually exported from Blockbench. So I'll copy that over as well. Let's actually go here. There you go. Right. So sometimes what happens is that it doesn't have the texture properly done. So you can see that right now it just points to, okay, tutorial mode. That's great. But also the name of the texture, but it doesn't, you know, actually specify a folder. So this is going to be machine. I'm going to put it under machines here. And then I also actually want a, another thing added there, and that's going to be the particles. So we're going to just add another one here, and that's going to be article and that's going to be minecraft colon sla uh, colon block slash iron block so when we destroy this block we get iron block particles that's the idea here and the rest should be fine the item model is well just a normal item model for any different block basically we're just having the you know pointing back to the block model as you can see nothing spectacular there and then for the texture as i've said we're going to make a new directory called machines and then instead of there we're going to add the Jim Cunning Station texture. Let's go. There we go. There it is. And then it is added as well. So this is, of course, the same texture right here, right? You can export this by just right clicking Save As, and then you should be able to easily export this and use this as well. And then these are actually all of the steps that we need to do. Like I said, usually when you have a very, very complex shape, then you might require multiple voxel shapes because in this case, this shape is the same, you know, regardless of how many, you know, if you rotate it 90 degrees, 180 or 270 degrees, it's going to be the same thing. But sometimes that is not the case. So then, then sometimes you need multiple voxel shapes. Uh, as always, I just highly suggest being open to experimentation with this, playing around with this a little bit, and then I'm sure that you will get your custom shape and your custom block model just the way you want it to. But that is actually all of the things that we need to add for a custom block model right here. So let's see if it works. All right, find ourselves back in Minecraft. And as you can see, the gem cutting station has been successfully added to the game. So let's set it down and there you go, everything working exactly how you'd expect it to. And if I set it down right here, you can see it changes the orientation just like basically I wanted to. 
So it works, well, I mean, pretty much exactly how you would expect it to. And you can also see that if I hover over this, it basically only, you know, covers, you know, this part of the actual block. And I can step on it. And yes, I do am going through, you know, the stuff there. But honestly, I really think that that is not a, that big of a deal, uh, all things considered. I really think that when it comes to the voxel shapes, you really should just approximate it. I could, in theory, add another box on top of it to, you know, represent the rest. But honestly, I think that it's it's more hassle than it's really worth. And it already looks really amazing. So I think that we're actually going to be fine. And that's actually how easy it is to add a custom block model to Minecraft. Right, one last thing I wanted to mention is that to get the thing properly being displayed inside of your inventory, what you can do is you can go to display and then you can change the, you know, things right here in the display. You can see this is the third person, third person, first person, first person, and you can even put it on the, your head, on the ground, how it looks on the ground, you can put it differently in the frame and then also differently in the GUI. So basically here you can change all of this and then it is all represented in the block model JSON file as well. Right, but that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated and I'll see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.